All right, uh, welcome to part five of Maxwell Render Basics. And um, as you can see, we're starting on with this file, um, which is uh, interior lighting scene. And we can kind of zoom out. It's basically a box with two rooms in it. Um, if I ghost it, box with two rooms with it. So it's spheres on the outside, inside. Uh, this is a sort of uh, compass that shows the sun direction, which I will show you in a little bit how to get to. Um, but you can see if I hide um, the roof here, there's a couple of things going on. Uh, number one, if you look at my layers, basically the same thing. Emitters one, two, three, and four, and an area light. Now, um, I'm going to hide the area light for now because that's that big blue plane right there, and that's kind of like uh, an interior lighting shortcut I use. Okay? But just so you get a sense of what's going on, I have an array of these sort of uh, spotlights, you know, wall washers that you're looking at, and you'll see this tiny little red sort of surface, right? This red surface, that's emitter one, right? If I turn that layer on and off, okay? So I have emitters here. I have emitters basically at the ends of each of these uh, arrays of spotlights. So the red, the orange, uh, green, and purple on this this side of the wall, I think. Uh, let's see. If I open it, yeah, okay. So basically, you know, four sets of uh, wall washer lights, emitters right here, uh, one and two. And if you take a look at them, they're fairly standard. You know, they they have the power cranked up really high uh, because the surface areas of the lights are sort of really small, right? So this is like what uh, one million or something, okay? Um, but that's the idea, okay? So um, let me show and uh, let's set this back to that interior view. So the interior view looks like this. These are basically uh, glass panes, um, more or less. So a couple spheres. Um, I'm actually going to turn all of the emitter layers off first, just to see, um, so you can see what they look like. Okay, and uh, we'll do this using the fire preview. So that's all fire, and um, turn that on. So immediately you'll see, uh, this is a very dark and shady room, you know, the, uh, from the outside and you can kind of see uh, because if you go to the location and time, this is like 5 p.m., which is why I'm getting a really sort of acute angle um, in the sun angle, right? It's really coming deep into the room and this is sort of the shady you'll get. Now you'll see that it takes a while for it to clear because like I said, you know, the darker the environment, the longer it really takes for, you know, the calculator for the light to kind of bounce through and clear things up, right? But you can kind of see the outside environment a little bit. Now, obviously you can uh, mess with your uh, EV settings, right? Right now it's set to eight. Um, if I move it to, let's say, 10, makes it darker, right? If I move it to like six or five, then maybe the old overall image gets sort of over bright or washed out, okay? So I'll set it back to eight just so to sort of what it was uh, just for now. But you can kind of see the effect uh, as a sort of quick preview of what you'll get. Now, as you saw before, these are small emitter lights. So if I turn on emitter one, uh, the layer, and uh, give this sort of a second to refresh, and depending on the circumstance, you might actually have to refresh the scene. But you'll see once I turn that emitter on, uh, the wall washers on this side actually start showing up and the light starts to kind of take over the right side of the scene. If I turn on the second set of emitters and see if it updates automatically. If not, you might have to refresh the scene. Yeah, refresh the scene, let it run. Um, it'll take a while. Okay, you see this side, which is a very orangey light that I've applied, uh, starts to show up as well. but. Like I said, with all sort of interior scenes, these scenes tend to take quite a while um, to clear up. And you don't necessarily want to like go around, you know, unless you really want this sort of uh, spotlight effect. 
Um, <clears throat> you don't necessarily want to go around putting like small emitter lights everywhere, right? Because one, two, three, four, like there's like maybe 20 lights in the scene. It takes a long time to calculate that many lights. So this guy, the area light that I have, is the sort of trick uh, I use often for kind of making something like this. Um, if I turn it on and actually turn off both of those, you'll get a better sense of what it does. Uh, it's basically a simple area light uh, that's sort of shooting downwards into the scene. And you'll see that as soon as I refresh it, it basically illuminates the overall interior just like very evenly. Okay, and you can look at the area light here um, in the materials or the, in, in the emitters, right? It's just a simple and it's only powered to 2000, but because it's a large surface, um, that's what makes it pretty effective in basically lighting up the interior of the scene. You know, as an overall, you can still see the sort of sun coming in, but it, you get a sort of really even light. Um, I'm going to move that to the side. But one of the things you have to pay attention to in this case, obviously, like I said, is the direction, right? The arrows are shooting downwards, okay? So the, the sort of uh, normal face um, is the face that will pre be projecting light, first of all. Second of all, um, if you go out to one of the side views, you'll see that that uh, sort of blue surface, this guy, which is, the, uh, which is that surface, I basically made it, made a big surface that covers the ceiling, okay? <clears throat> and I've moved it down just a tiny little bit, like maybe 0 0.1 inch, right? So it's very close, very, 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 very close to uh, the top of the ceiling, but just below, okay? It's just slightly, I've nudged it just a little bit below uh, the top of the ceiling, <clears throat> okay? Now, the other thing that's interesting or that's unique to this method um, is <clears throat> if I look at my properties with that sort of uh, sort of you know area light blue area light um, surface selected look at my properties and the fourth one if you have your maximal render on and installed you actually get a maximal tab okay so here you will see that it is this surface actually hidden from camera, I have this toggle, hide from GI, which means it won't cast shadows on itself, and hide from reflections and re refractions. So it basically makes it an invisible uh, plane that shoots light out into um, the uh, interior. <clears throat> now, what happens, for example, if I have this selected, right, and I don't hide it from camera, basically it will show up. You'll see it. This is a, a complete. It's a it's a blinding white pane of light that's giving off all this light. It's light in the inside, right? But you can see it just like you can see a, a sort of fluorescent fluorescent light bulb, or it's it's basically got a. A, a, a white panel of light and that's what that does so if you don't hide it from camera uh, then it will show up if you hide it from camera it basically makes that invisible or transparent but but the light that it gives off will still go into the scene now hide from GI is important as well because if you don't then that surface will still be there and you see if I, I as soon as I've unchecked it it basically makes the the uh, the ceiling black, right? So this basically means that um, it's sucking in, or like a black hole, right? It's sucking in all the reflection that should be bouncing off onto the ceiling. Um, but you know, we've only made the sort of area light surface invisible, right? And so, to for in order for this technique to work, you basically need both of these to be on, right? Hidden from camera, hide from GI. Um, hydro reflections, refractions, some is necessary sometimes, so you don't see, you know, stuff in, let's say, the glass pane over there. If I don't check it, you might actually see a really bright sort of, uh, you see that uh, in the reflection in the glass, right? You'll actually see my light show up in the reflection, right? So that's what hide from reflections and refractions does. So to kind of make this sort of a uh, 
cheat or illusion seamless, you need basically all three of these checked, right? Okay. Hidden, don't check hidden. Hidden will, is basically the same as turning it off on the layer or just, it will basically hide the whole thing and it just won't project light anymore. Okay, that's here under properties, under the Maxwell sort of button. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now, um, you'll see a much more detailed description about that here in this link, which I will post, um, invisible emitters. And you'll see this. So normal emitter, where you can see the geometry and the shadows get cast, right? Now, if you hide the emitter, the emitter itself disappears, but it still shows itself as shadows, right? Like we just saw. But then, if it's an invisible emitter with invisible geometry and doesn't cast shadows, then it disappears, but you know it still gives off light, and that's exactly the type that we are doing there. So you can see this sort of a very good example of that, um, you know, just as uh, a reference so you can you know understand what's going on now there's a couple other links uh, lighting with emitters that you know basically is what we covered in the last video uh, we'll sort of talk about that in a little bit as well as you know the multi-light you can look through this so we just going to show you very quickly you know the same thing like how you can kind of sort of change the lights use the e-mixer uh, there's some tutorials here uh, that you can look at these links and um, these things I will all post, you know, mixing lights, right, using an e-mixer to kind of, uh, in the same rendering scene, just like change the lighting to kind of change the mood or the tone of the rendering. Uh, these are all sort of covered in the last uh, video. So I'll use, I'll, I will post all these links um, onto the course module for you to look at. All right, so um, to kind of continue, um, you know, we sort of made move that back and then you can see okay well we can turn all of these on the emitters one two and the area light and just refresh the scene so basically what you'll see is that you'll have all these on now these emitters that are at the ends of these uh, lights right if I go to the properties and look at them you'll see that I haven't I didn't do any of that right because you want them to glow right you want them to kind of be seen as almost lights that are shooting out um, as light bulbs right so I don't have any of these sort of things activated I only have it activated for the, the sort of blue uh, pane or the blue area light that's sort of floating there right so that's a kind of way to kind of cheat the system but you know very effectively light your interior scene now, you can do a hybrid like this where you have some spotlights to create sort of spot wall washing lighting uh, while still using the overall area light to kind of uh, help you sort of uh, boost in the shadows, uh, so to speak. All right. So if you let this run, uh, and I'm just going to pull out a render, keep in mind, especially because we're using multi-lights, um, and I actually have the outside uh, sun dialed really, really down in this. Because it's a multi-light rendering, um, and it, it's a darker interior rendering, you have to let this run for a long time. And you'll see this when I let it run to uh, SL16, it took about four hours, right, four and a half hours. So this is something that you would only do if you're like really, you know, you're just going to sleep, right? And you're gonna leave your computer on and just let it run. So you'll see here that uh, basically, you know, we can play around with this uh, emitter one, emitter two, and the area light, right? So emitter one obviously is the sort of yellower uh, uh, wall washer, so right, like this, and you can kind of see the reflection in the glass on the outside, right? Uh, emitter two is the sort of really orangey ones on the left side wall. Right, and then um, the area light, you can actually control how much, but uh, you kind of run the risk of like overpowering the scene if you have you, you turn the area light um, on too much, right? Because you'll see the intensity of these lights actually start to go away. But you can get a like a nice overall diffuse lighting into the area. But you'll see that basically the area light by itself is actually can be adequate to light an overall scene like this, right? Um, there might be sort of certain hot, hot spots based off like, you know, uh, where things are and, or your geometry. And you basically generally, generally want to avoid that uh, sort of area plane intersecting with any of your geometry. 
uh, like your walls, for example, right? Because you might get some really weird results, okay? And that's why sort of uh, in the model, I just like move it downwards from the ceiling plane just a little bit, and then I don't let it jut into the walls or any of the other geometry because it'll probably create some weird lighting artifacts. Okay, so you'll see that, but like, uh, you know, so, sort of by combining that with some of these, um, you can get a sort of nice warm um, interior lighting situation that looks like it's lit. Uh, if you kind of turn the area light down just a little bit and sort of bump up your spotlights to kind of let them take on their in, their sort of inherent character, right? Now, if I had the exterior physical sky on, then I could actually get the shadows in and, you know, it would look uh, sort of more like uh, this. If I turn off both of those, refresh it, because I still have the sun on, at least in this uh, file or in this example, right? And then I can control the area light to a certain extent. And so by changing the uh, power value here uh, with the area light, well, then you'll see that uh, for the most part, the interior, like as compared to, oops, compared to uh, when the area light is off, like it's very dark on the inside, right? But because I have the area light on, it's sort of, um, you know, sort of what you would expect, like the, the sort of shadows that, that are coming in, but then, you know, the interior is sort of in shade, but it's not pitch black dark. If I had disabled it, then this would basically sort of go into the sort of pitch black dark sort of scene. Much darker, right? The sort of contrast is much, much stronger, right? Um, so that's the sort of shortcut. Uh, the other two are basically on the other side of the room, which is basically in, in complete complete darkness. Uh, we can take a look at it really quick. Set view, interior two. So that's this side. Um, it's completely dark if you turn both of these on. Okay, so these are really, really weak um, at the moment. So. But um, you can kind of see how slowly this really resolves. So you kind of really want to avoid just using, you know, uh, spotlights uh, in a scene. It, it just makes it excruciatingly slow. Okay, so that, you know, basically sort of shows you how to kind of fake um, uh, interior lighting, uh, an interior area lighting, if you will. But uh, just remember, you know, be careful, be mindful uh, of the geometry. Um, make sure that, you know, this sort of pane, uh, this sort of plane is, um, this emitter plane, this blue emitter plane um, is sort of, uh, it's not coincident with one of your surfaces, right? It's just slightly below. You have to kind of move it slightly below. It doesn't intersect with any of your walls or geometry. You might get something really strange. But this is a good way um, to kind of light your sort of interior spaces if you can. All right.